Hello, I'm Abyx Toycat, and welcome back to another redstone tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make a redstone door in Minecraft that actually combines two of my favourite types of doors into one. So this is a lava door, which means you open and close the door by turning on or off the flow of lava, and it's also a password protected lava door. So the only way to actually, you know, turn on or off the lava is to put your password in this slot first. Otherwise the door will not work as you can see right there. So I'm going to be showing you how to make this step by step in today's video. Hopefully this is something you do like. If it is, please do like it and let me know. It helps out the channel a lot and let's maybe we'll see more stuff like this on the channel. Anyway, let's get straight into the video then, shall we? By first of all explaining what I mean by password protected. Because you might think, do you write on it a sign or something? Basically, you need to have an exact item with an exact name to actually activate this door. In my case, the item name is Key443DSXV8. And if you don't put that exact item in there, so if you just put a regular uh, redstone torch or you put a button or something in there, it's not going to work. You have to put the exact item, Key443, etc., into the slot. And then once it goes in uh, to the, uh, you know, the, the hopper down below, then then you can uh, turn off the door and because the key's on the slot. It's a really cool uh, you know, system in my opinion that you can use without the lava if you want to, but it's just a really cool way to activate doors because of the fact that it means even if someone sees you you know, enter your password, like you know, show, uh, they see you throwing a redstone torch, they need to have the exact password on that redstone torch to be able to do anything, which I, I really like the idea of. So yeah, I'll be showing you how to make that in today's video. Uh, it is relatively simple. The redstone part is just a couple of trails linking up together, but I will take this nice and slow for those of you who want to you know, see this step by step and don't uh, be just be like, oh, so so, uh, you know, I'll just skip a second and do the whole thing. I'm going to show you everything step by step today. So, yeah, let's get straight into the video then, shall we? By explaining the, you know, the non-redstone bit, because this is very easy. Anyone can follow this. You just want to have a couple of, uh, you know, a couple of blocks off the ground, a five by two uh, kind of pathway with three high walls. So, uh, as you can see right here, one, two, three, four, five, that is. Then we'll have three high walls and then a ceiling. So you want to have an enclosed kind of thing. Obviously, on one side of this, you're going to want to have your house. Uh, in my case, my house is two cactuses. <laughs> it's not a very good house, but, uh, you know, you can have your actual house on one side. And then the other side have the outside world. So I'm using stone bricks here because, uh, you know, stone bricks have stone brick half slabs. Anything of half slabs means this can be a little bit better and a little bit more obscure. Because otherwise, people might be able to see that little slot in the wall that little bit easier. And they might guess that it's kind of relevant. Because a lot of people don't know the kind of, uh, you know, one of the things that uh, is used for this. I'll explain in a second, but yeah, uh, finish up this little enclosed hallway. Again, I'm going to use stone bricks, but use whatever block you want to. And then, once you've finished it, in the middle, you want to have uh, the two blocks missing on both the top and the bottom, like so. The reason we're doing this, then place a block down below so it's only one block missing on the bottom. The reason we're doing this is because uh, we want to have a lava flow which comes from the top here down to the bottom and doesn't, uh, you know, doesn't look like it's, uh, you know, it, it won't look like it's anything there. But if you don't do these little things, then it will actually make the lava spew everywhere. As if you have these uh, little slots on the top and bottom, the lava will only pour from there down into the hole and it just makes the whole thing a lot easier. So yeah, with that uh, said and done, let's put some dispensers up here facing downwards. Make sure the dispensers are facing down like this. This is because to activate the uh, lava, we're going to have the dispensers activate on to make the lava come out and activate off to make the lava stop coming out and then let us through. So uh, yeah, with that said, now we're going to have to start working on the redstone bit. So the first bit you want to do is grab a half slab of any choice. Uh, obviously, you can do this without, but if you have the hopper on show, people can see your password and it kind of defeats the whole point of the thing. And then you put this on the uh, bottom half of the block over here. If you want to, uh, if you want this, uh, you know, the hole to be in the bottom half of the block, you can have slabs be everywhere around here like this, and it'll kind of look like it's the bottom half of the block. But for this example, we'll just have it on the top half because you can do this wherever you want it. You can have this a block up, you can have it a block down, you can have this somewhere entirely out to your door. But I'm going to put it below the button to make life easier. So uh, yeah, with that said, below this you're going to want to put a hopper. So uh, the reason we're doing this is because if you don't know, a hopper will still allow you, it will absorb anything in the block above it. Meaning even though you know this is kind of a seal of flow thing. We can still put redstone in there if we get it in at just the right angle. So it's a, just the right angle to put your key in there. And as you can see, some of those, or at least one of those went in there. Uh, two, two bits of redstone went in there. And that would be our key if, if it was our key going in there. And that would activate the uh, the thing we're doing. So the, the thing we're trying to activate here is a redstone comparator. This measures what exactly is inside the hopper and, uh, you know, any one time. And the stronger, uh, the more items inside the hopper, the stronger a signal it puts out. What we're going to do is we're going to put it directly on the verge of being, you know, one extra signal strength so that the one key we throw in there will be enough to push it over the edge and activate the whole redstone circuit and make the door work. So, yeah, that's how this whole thing works, in case you're wondering. So, one, two, three. 
four blocks is how many you need for that. So uh, the fourth block will only activate once you put the uh, the f uh, fifth key in there because we have four keys and we have one other item in there. So let's go make the keys first of all before I explain that. So you, to make a key, you're going to need to find an anvil or use an anvil or just make an anvil if we're in creative. And basically, we're going to have to go ahead and uh, use the anvil to make six keys of any one type. So we can use any item as a key. I use redstone torches in the previous example, but you can use any item that's significant to you or any item that looks like a key. In this example, we'll use some levers. So we'll make six copies. You can make five, but six is so you have a spare. Uh, you want to make six copies of this key and uh, then call this your password or your key name or whatever you want. Something that you think other people won't be able to guess. So in this case, we'll call it uh, Y... Why toy cat? <laughs> why toy cat? What? What? Just, just why toy cat? So yeah, that's gonna be the password for now. It's not a very secure password, but why not? You can pick whatever password you want there, and that's what you do. So you want to have six copies of this key, or at least five at the very least, and you want to put these in the hopper. At least four of these in the hopper. One, two, three, four. Then take out this redstone that shouldn't be in there, and you want to put in the other slot just one item that can't be duplicated in there. So a single stack item. So something like a lava bucket. You can't have two lava buckets in the same slot. Something like. Uh, you know, you can even put, uh, you know, a, a tool in there. I'm going to put a golden hoe in there because this will be the one single purpose it will ever serve in life. And boom, we've got a golden hoe in there. Now, while we've just got four keys in there, as you can see, it won't power this fourth bit of redstone. But as soon as we throw our one of our other keys in there, so let's throw white toy cat into the uh, thing, into the little hole. Let's make sure we actually get it in there, uh, shall we? Oh, it just landed in there anyway, it seems. Oh, no, it, it went into the other stack. But yeah, let's uh, throw it into the hole. You'll see <laughs> as soon as I can actually land this correctly. Uh, okay, there we go. You'll see what that does is that activates the redstone over here and that'll make our whole thing uh, go forwards and do its own thing. So uh, yeah, that's how this thing works. Uh, so this will only go four blocks otherwise, which means this should be our repeater. And boom, let's place our repeater down here, shall we? And then we can make this whole thing work. So now if we take out the, uh, the two keys which we put in there, then you'll see it turns off, and when we put them back in, it turns off. That's basically the idea behind this. This hopper will now not accept anything but the key. If you throw any other item in this hopper, even if it's a golden hoe, because golden hoes don't stack, you won't be able to make it activate. You need to have this exact item with this exact name for it to work. That's why this is a clever password protected door. So yeah, with that said now, uh, we'll just leave a key in there just for you know the sake of testing so we can see everything works and uh, what you want to do is you want to have a second uh, kind of thing above here and this is going to be where the you know the button goes and where the button activates it because what we're doing to make this whole thing be a double activator is we're using an AND gate which means uh, that both of these redstone trails need to be on for this whole thing to activate so with that set oh actually we need to start raising this before then so what we're going to do now is we're going to raise up the redstone as we go rather than like that uh, so up to here will be the, the redstone, well, we'll put the repeater over here, I guess, and then, boom, let's place the redstone up there, and you want to have these two paths meet somewhere up here, but not next to the uh, dispensers. Speaking of these dispensers, uh, earlier on we could have done this, or you can do it now, you, you need to put lava uh, buckets in there at some point, just so I don't forget, I'm going to put them in there now. So, you want to put a lava bucket in each dispenser, this is so the dispenser can take out the lava, put it back in. Without lava buckets, this whole thing, of course, is not going to work. So, uh, yeah, with that said now... Uh, like I said, you need to make these two redstone trails uh, both go up into up to where this is, but without meeting each other until they get to this and gate. So uh, go up here. Oh, I think I know it, it doesn't matter. But yeah, let's uh, just go up like this, up like that. And what we should be able to do is if we've done this right, the and yeah, there we go. You need to have them one block apart like this so the trails won't interfere with each other. So now if we place all of this, you can see. The trails won't interfere with each other, but they can connect to an AND gate. This AND gate, like I said, uh, the only way the AND gate will activate is if both trails are on. So even though this is on, this only allows this other one to be on. And when this isn't on, no matter how many times you press the button, it's not going to work. It's the basic idea behind this. And an AND gate, if you're wondering, looks something like this. It's three blocks. Uh, a redstone torch is what we're going to need on top of each of those. Uh, a redstone torch on top of each of these little things. And then also a redstone torch there. And then this, as soon as both these uh, inputs are on, it will activate the redstone torch. So also, a uh, redstone in between them. That's very, very essential. Otherwise, it won't work. And then, boom. Now, with that done, as you can see, you need both these inputs to be on to activate the redstone. Just to show you that, I'm going to quickly press the button and then run up here and show you. Boom. That turns on only when both these trails are on, which is only happening when that's there. So, uh, as you can see, I've created a redstone lock here. This is an issue where you can see this is uh, just not going to work. So, if we lower this block down here. Lower both these blocks, in fact. Now this shouldn't create a redstone lock when we turn on the thing. A uh, redstone lock, if you're wondering, is where it stays on even though it shouldn't. Uh, that's something you need to fix because otherwise, there we go. As you can see, the, this is only on once both the inputs are on, which is only for a split second. So now we just need to connect this redstone up to both of the dispensers, which is a very simple task. Just have a repeater on both and then connect them up to, by a redstone. And boom, we've actually done the redstone, which will make the whole thing work. Now when we press the button, 
as you can see, lava will spew out. It's simple as that. So, uh, just to recap anything, in case you're like, Toy Cat, I think I missed something. So, this one over here will only activate once our key is on. This will cause the redstone to go up the chain into this side of the AND gate. This uh, side of the AND gate is only activated by the button. Once both sides are activated together, and only once both are together, that will cause redstone signal to go through here and activate the lava. The lava buckets, uh, every time you press the button, will turn this on and off as long as there is a key in there. So yeah, now what you want to do is you want to take your key out and you've got yourself a pretty much complete door. Uh, the, one, the one other thing you want, might want to bear in mind is how you get the key out because obviously... Let's wait for the lava to just, you know, let's just walk through the lava. We're in creative. We can do that. But you need to have some way to get your key out of the slot because that's something you want to do. So uh, you can do this in a more elegant way, but because this doesn't really matter because it's internal redstone, not external redstone. Uh, basically, what I recommend is on the inside of your house, which again, my house is just two cactus because this is a lovely house, right? But yeah, so uh, <laughs> on the inside of your house, uh, you can you want to have some access to the uh, thing and then you can take out your key and that deactivates the whole redstone circuit and it stops other people from being able to turn it on or off. So people can't trap you in and people can't trap you out. If you want to turn this on while you're inside then you can uh, obviously put the thing back in there press the button from the inside and then take out the key basically without the key in there they can't do anything without the password they can't make a key and boom that's how this whole system works so make sure you store this second key somewhere safe or give it to a friend or something because as soon as someone finds out the name of this key the whole system is broken however the cool thing about this system is as soon as someone finds out your key name somehow all you have to do is you have to go in and you can just be like okay then well I'm gonna just rename all the keys and you can do that and that'll work like that so it will cost you a few experience points to do this but it's totally worth it in my opinion so yeah with all of this said this is the uh, redstone password protected lava door uh, let's just show you it finally working while the key's not in there I cannot turn on these things while the key is in there Wait, let's actually get the key in there. As you can see, I prefer it being on the other half because it just makes life so much easier. But we get the key in the slot, which is so difficult when it's like this for some reason. Um, there we go. Then we can actually turn on the lava. And the lava will stop us from getting through. Because lava, of course, I, I'm not sure if you're familiar with this, but it actually burns you when you stand in it. That's, that's one of its characteristics. And then once while the key's in there, we can also turn it off. When, when it's turned off, we jump through it. And on the other side, we can take out the key from the slot. Obviously, wait till the lava stops for you to run through. I'm just doing that for the sake of speed. Then you can take out your key, and then it stops having purpose. So, yeah, that's how, that's how the whole key thing works. I hope you did enjoy the video. Hopefully, you learned something. Even if you're not going to make this exact door, hopefully, you learned how to make a lava door and how to make a password protected door and how to make the two combined uh please do like that if you did like it it really helps out the channel and lets me know you really liked it uh share it if you really really liked it apparently and uh, subscribe if you're new around here i make videos like this every single day on my channel teaching you things about minecraft you might not have known before and hopefully you uh, want to see more like this and you'll subscribe and see them daily on my channel thank you all for watching and i'll see you all in the next video oh one more point if you want to like obscure this redstone because while this is there the whole thing's pointless obviously you need to have this built into a cave or something just make sure this isn't visible because that kind of gives away the whole game and people can just break the red sun. But you just don't want to make that visible. But yeah, thank you all for watching and I'll see you all in the next one. Goodbye.